Hello, and thanks for logging on to this WPRI.com Web Extra. We're here with pollster and Eyewitness News political analyst Joe Fleming. We have our latest CD1 uh, poll out, and we pitted up uh, Congressman David Cicilline and Anthony Gemma. Joe, let's start there. The first hurdle for Congressman David Cicilline and Anthony Gemma is the primary. Who fares better? Right now, David Cicilline is holding a four-point lead over Anthony Gemma, 40% to 36% with 20% of the voters undecided and another 4% who refused to say who they would vote for. So right now, David Cicilline has a slight lead, which means we actually have a strong Democratic primary going on right now. I think what this really means in terms of the election is Brendan Dowdy is the big winner because Brendan Dowdy now can sit back and let the two Democrats fight it out and spend a lot of money before the general election. Uh, we should point out it's a 4% uh, lead for right. David Cicilline. Right. What's the margin The margin error, error in this survey is 5.7%. We interviewed 302 registered likely primary voters. With a 4% lead uh, for an incumbent congressman mm -hmm. in a primary uh, in his district, is this cause for concern for David it, Cicilline? It is cause for concern for David Cicilline, but you can look at this race in two ways. One, if I'm David Cicilline, with everything that's happened to me over the last 18 months, this may be good because I've already hit bottom and I'm on my way up now. Well, there's no other polls out, so we don't know if David Cicilline has been lower than this or if his numbers are still going down. But after everything that's happened to him, he can say, I'm still in the lead in a Democratic primary. Anthony Gemmer, on the other hand, can say, hey, I'm within 4% of an incumbent co congressman, and there's still 20% of the voters undecided at this time. So both of them could take something out of this in a positive direction. 20% aren't sure traditionally how do undecideds break in elections for the incumbent or for the challenger? Traditionally, undecideds would break more towards the challenger. However, in this case, with all the negatives that David Cicilline has, for these people to be undecided and not with the challenger, it means David Cicilline has a chance to get these voters back on his side. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but the opportunity is there for David to move these voters to his side. Um, you said that uh, the congressman might look at this as he's hit bottom and is right. rebounding. Do we know if that's happened? Well, what we do know is in the last WPRI survey back in February when we did a statewide sample, he had a job rating among Democratic voters of 25 percent. In this survey, it's a little bit higher. So that could show he is coming back some. Again, keep in mind, a Democratic primary voter is different from a general election voter. Democratic primary voters in Rhode Island tend to be more independent, I'm sorry, be more liberal and be more union type members. So that would be two groups that would definitely favor David Cicilline in a primary. And, and to that, uh, how do you take the fact that David Cicilline does better with those likely to vote while Gemma does better with those somewhat likely? Yeah, that, that's another point. In this survey, we, we did a cross-tab by those who are definitely likely going to vote in this election. And David Cicilline, if you just look at those voters, has a 7% lead over Anthony Gemma. Of those who might vote, David Cicilline trails by 1%. So in a smaller turnout, Again, these are traditional Democratic voters who always vote. They're more for David Cicilline, so his numbers are slightly better. Going back to something you said earlier, I sure. just kind of want to ask it again. So the big winner in this poll isn't David Cicilline, isn't Anthony Gemma, it's... It's Brendan Darity, because Brendan Darity now can sit back, let David Cicilline and Anthony Gemma spend a lot of money, possibly up to a half million dollars each in the primary, and then seven or eight weeks later have to face Brendan Darity, where Brendan Darity could keep stockpiling his money and building a positive image for himself over these next few months. There's an age gap between the two candidates and so much as who's drawn to them. Cicilline right. again hangs on with the younger voters still. He does very well with the younger voters. He's getting about 55, 56 percent of the vote of the younger voters, where Anthony Gemmer is only getting 20 percent of those 18 to 39. Anthony's leading among the 40 to 59 year age group, but not by a lot, by about seven or eight points. Among the seniors, those over the age of 60, they are basically tied. Gemmer has a 1 percent lead over David Cicilline. That's the group that's going to really decide this election because they are divided at this point. David Cicilline and Anthony Gemma both are going to have to work this group very strongly. They tend to vote very heavily in Democratic primaries. Wrapping up the head-to-head -head race here, is it safe to say this is a toss-up? Right now it looks to be a toss-up. I would give a slight advantage to David Cicilline at this time due to the fact that he is winning among union members. He's doing very, very well among female voters. And these are groups where I think he's going to work the next few months to try to increase that margin. For example, in union members, one out of four union members are undecided at this point. When the unions get to work, they could probably move these voters to the Cicilline camp. But certainly an incumbent congressman would yes. like to have a, a wider margin. Obviously an incumbent congressman and a crime would like to have a 15 to 20 percent lead. Okay. But with everything that's going on in the last 18 months for David Cicilline, I would think 
you know, any lead at this time is good for him. And I just want to point out that whole section, you didn't refer to your notes once <laughs> when rattling off those numbers. All right. Uh, let's talk about uh, job performance. We did touch yep. on it a bit, but how do primary voters think Congressman Cicilline is doing in Washington? Well, his job performance among Democratic primary voters is a little bit better than his statewide job performance among all voters. Right now, he has about a 32% positive job rating and a 61% negative job rating. So the negative is still very high, but the 32% is up. When we polled the general election back in February, it was about 20% positive job rating. So among primary voters, he is doing better with his job rating. Um, yet despite low job approval, and it's yep. still relatively low, even though it seems to have gone up from the statewide, mm -hmm. uh, it seems he can win back some of those people in the matchup against uh, Anthony Gemma. Yeah, I mean, he has a 32% favorable job rating, yet he's getting 40% of the vote in the primary. What do you make of that? Well, I make it that people are only rating him fear are still voting for him. They may not like the job he's doing in the sense they may be referring back to uh, the city of Providence, okay. but they're saying philosophically, he's more in line to how they believe what Congress should be and what a congressman should do and how he votes. It, so the voting for David Cicilline. And, and I think that's an important question here. Um, he's a freshman congressman in right. the minority uh, party in the House of right. Representatives. Do you think when people are answering this question, it's reflective on his job in Washington or his past performance as mayor? I really believe it's his past performance as mayor. Because as you said, Tim, he's a minority. He's a first-term congressman. He's not going to be able to accomplish a lot in Washington. People are looking back at the city of Providence, the financial condition, and what David Cicilline said in 2010 about the financial condition. I really believe this is a big part of the problem he's having for re-election this year. Of course, you can't ask how Anthony Gemma is doing in his job, no. so we asked uh, uh, you we, know, we what asked, people thought of him right? and uh, what were the results of Well, that. we asked the voters if they had a positive or negative opinion of Anthony Gemma. And we found about 37% had a favorable opinion of Anthony Jemmer, and 17% had a negative opinion of Anthony. However, 45% of the people could not answer this question, which means Anthony Jemmer is not well known among Democratic primary voters at this time. We, we're talking about a guy that uh, ran a, a pretty testy race yep. two years ago. He spent a lot of money in that. Does mm -hmm. that surprise you that there's still a lot of people who just don't know who he is? No, it doesn't. People aren't zeroed in on elections all the time. Uh, we look at things a lot closer than the general public does, and they really cannot place Anthony Jemmer at this time. Now, once he starts his media and starts getting on the airwaves, that, that um, people who don't know him will decrease, obviously. But he has a better than two-to-one favorable to unfavorable opinion of him. However, there's still a large number who don't know him, which means it could be good for him in the sense that he could define himself in a positive way. But at the same time, it gives David Cicilline the opportunity to define Aunt Anthony Jemmer in the way that he wants to define him. Uh, as we all know, Congressman Cicilline has apologized for saying Providence was in, quote, excellent financial condition back in 2010. Yep. Uh, how is that apology playing out based on these numbers? Well, based on these numbers, about 49% of the voters said the apology makes no difference to them. So that's the key thing here. Uh, half the voters say it's not going to have an effect on them at all. Uh, so he may get a little bit of bump from it, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a big bump at this point at all. But could it have been, do you think it was still a good move for him to come out and try and do it? Obviously it was, because otherwise that would be brought up throughout the whole campaign. You know, David, why aren't you telling him, apologize for what you said in 2010? The thing is, if he did this 16 months ago, mm -hmm. it probably would have had a lot bigger effect on this campaign. But when he did it, it's something I felt he had to do. I think what he tried to do was stop the bullying that was going on. And if this is a way to stop his negatives from going any lower, it's a positive thing for David Cicilline. What is the most important thing to primary voters right now? Now, that, that's interesting, Tim, because we asked, the, we give the voters a series of questions, uh, uh, choices, of uh, what they thought the most important issues were. And again, 46% said the most important issue for the Congress when they decide who to vote for is the economy and jobs. So I think what it tells is you're going to see both David Cicilline, Anthony Jemmer, and at the general election, Brendan Dowry talking about the economy and jobs. Uh, after that, the next thing was 24% of the people said character. Character was important in who, the, who they're going to vote for. And again, that's going to reflect on David Cicilline, I think, in this race. Then we found experience was 8%. Uh, they felt 7% felt the best chance to win. And basically, the bottom one was Providence Finances. Only 7% said so they're going to decide just on that one thing alone, Providence Finances. Would you, though, 
take the Providence finances results as well as character, character and combine those when looking at Congressman Cicilline? If you take those two, those are two groups that are probably going to be supporting Anthony Gemma very strongly. If they're saying character and they're saying Providence finances, they're probably voters that are not going to vote for David Cicilline. They're going to vote probably more for Anthony Gemma. With the economy and jobs, that's an area David Cicilline is going to try to focus in on. Okay, stepping back, looking at the entire poll now, yep. all the questions. Anything in this surprise you? Not really. Uh, David Cicilline is doing well at groups. He did well in the general election. Females, young voters. Uh, he's doing a lot better now among union members. Where in the general election survey, he did not do that well there. Uh, Anthony Gemma still has a large number of voters who don't know who he is. Uh, I thought that number might be a little bit lower, but, you know, it is what it is. So, I mean, overall, it's about what I thought. I thought the results would be, you know, fairly close uh, at this time because, again, David Cicilline has gone through so much negatives over the last 18 months. There has not been a lot of positive out there for David. Um, so what does each candidate have to do looking at these numbers? Well, if I'm David Cicilline, I want to still hit my positive, struggle with the jobs and the economy, but also I need to define Anthony Gemmer. If I cannot bring my positive numbers up, I need to bring Anthony Gemmer's positive numbers down. So you might see a lot of negative campaigning here in the sense of trying to bring Anthony's numbers down. If I'm Anthony Gemmer, I'm going to be talking about the city of Providence finances. I'm going to talk about David Sicily not being honest. I'm going to talk about the character issues. I'm going to try to go that way to win the Democratic primary. But if you're spending your money as David Cicilline uh, trying to define Anthony Gemma, mm -hmm. um, you're spending that money now and not toward the general election. Right. Is there an argument to be made that you should be spending your money and talking about the accomplishments you may have made down in Washington, D.C., about, about your own character, about who you are, instead of attacking Anthony Gemma? Because that plays then into the general election. Well, the thing is, if you don't win the primary, you're not in the general election. Mm -hmm. So you have to put a plan together that's going to win the primary. He could talk all about his accomplishments in Washington. Again, keep in mind, minority first-term congressman, not an awful lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. So in turn, if you can't get your positives up there by talking about positive things, you need to bring your opponent's positives down. And I think that's what uh, methods David may end up doing. Again, in the Democratic primary, we're talking about two years ago, there was 56,000 voters. This time it could be less because there's no mayor's race in Providence. There may not be a big mayor's race in Pawtucket, two areas which have very heavy turnout. So who, who does that favor? Well, again, it depends who comes out. If it's traditional Democratic Party voters, that would favor David Cicilline. Uh, if, it's, if the turnout gets voters who normally don't vote, that might be people who are looking more towards Anthony Gemma for a change. Um, we also asked uh, who, who voters think would have a better chance of beating the GOP challenger, Brendan Doherty. Yeah, when we asked that question, the results didn't surprise me that much. 34% said David Cicilline, 31% said Anthony Gemma, and we had about 29% who weren't sure on the question. They weren't sure which one of these two candidates had the best chance of beating uh, Brendan Doherty. About 6% said both of them equally. So that's not surprising. The numbers came pretty much reflecting on who the people are supporting in the survey. But overall, I think both these candidates would have a serious race in November against Brendan Doherty. Because at this time, our polling data from February showed Brendan Doherty beating either one of these candidates. Um, I want to talk about the mechanics of this poll to wrap this conversation yep. up. You know, those pesky, uh, pesky young people and their cell phones, how, yep. how difficult is it getting for you to find the, uh, to get to the right numbers for well, your sample? Well, it's, it's taking more calls. Obviously, we have to ask for young people, and the 18 to 39 age group is a tougher group to get. The one thing is they vote less than older voters, so you don't need as big of a sample of younger voters because their turnout's a lot smaller. But it is getting harder and harder to get these people on the phones. All right. Joe Fleming, thank you very much. My Excellent pleasure. job, as always. Thank you.